Hello everyone, Rissy Toothpick here, back again with some more Hercule Poirot's The First Cases, and today we're going to be trying to explore who blackmailed the Van Bosch family and why. And we are, I think we're trying to head to our room. I think that's our kind of like goal. Yeah, locate our room and get settled. It's on the west side, so this is of course the east side, so we're going to do a little exploring first. Oh. I'm not sure how it would fare coming face to face with such beasts. You would probably get mauled and eaten. Hmm. The time and skill it takes to build such a wonderful piece, it is an art form. There's a door there as well. We gotta remember that some doors might be difficult to spot. Painting of the sun rising over a town sadly appears to have some water damage. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have a new conversation. A beautifully composed painting of seven saints. Madame was has quite an eye for striking artwork. A painting of a valley with a series of beautiful cliffs. The scenery is truly breathtaking. All right. I think we can finally go to our room. Let's see what the connection is here. Exquisite painting. We can talk to Angeline. Oh my God. Zoom in. <laughs> get, get over there. But no connection, so nothing to worry about. Let us go to our room. Sounds like a window might be open. A selection of perfume, compliments of the family, seems rather fitting for a female occupant. Did they leave some cologne as well? That is weird. Maybe they weren't expecting us. That are we in the wrong room, one or the other. A roaring fire, I could stand and gaze into the flames for hours. Hmm. The fallen snow has laid a beautiful white blanket over the countryside that surrounds the house. Understandable to hide a woman's modesty while changing. Okay, so we have another clue here. Let's go with a changing screen and perfume bottle. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. It appears as though I'm staying in a very feminine room. Perhaps there has been some confusion. Okay, so room prepared for a female guest. It's going to be connected to one of these three more likely come my little gray cells let's go with the archibald is stressed due to a lack of staff magnifique now let's connect the dots it's clearly archibald is clearly flustered with his task it appears he has sent me to the wrong room and someone's more likely going to meet us you clearly flustered. Yep, it appears you sent me the wrong move room. Inspect the bedroom. A card is oh. hidden under the pillow. It indi indicates Hugo would like Miss Conrad to speak with him ASAP. It appears Monsieur Sterling has given me the wrong room. This one had been made up for a Jacqueline Conrad. No matter, I shall find my chambers myself. And let me clear these off. Inspect the ground floor hall. So they want us to go back downstairs.
see. I think we've already... Oh, here we go. There's a letter. An auctioneer's receipt. I hope Madame Van Den Bosch isn't finding it necessary to sell her belonging. Horton in Garkon, Master Auctioneer and Valuer. Receipt for sell of one oil painting, one gold flaked frame, chipped, one marble bust, 650... I don't know what the Fs are, but it's, it's some sort of cash or measurement of uh, values. Purchase total, handling fee, made payable to C. Van Den Bosch. Let us talk to this individual, though. You must be Detective Poirot. Welcome. Allow me to introduce myself. Gideon Demir. Gideon. The fiancé to Mademoiselle Angeline. The pleasure is all mine. Angeline spoke so highly of you. It sounds as though you are the man that can sort this terrible mess out. Oh yeah, we'll slowly but surely solve this case. I am, monsieur. You have my word. So let's see, uh, how has Angeline been since receiving the letters? She tries her best to keep everyone else happy, but I can see it is taking its toll. Quite understandable. She is feeling the burden of the family that is not hers to carry. Angeline has spoken with her mother. She has asked if there is anything that could be used against her, but she was just so dismissive. Interesting. And what are your thoughts on the matter? I do not want to overstep my position, but if there is something that could damage not only the Vandenbosch name, but our future, Angeline deserves to know. And that is a very diplomatic answer. You have met, madame. You know it is best to not get on her wrong side. Yeah, she can be pretty mean. I have, and Gideon is wise to select his battles carefully where madame is concerned. The guests that are attending your announcement? Mostly friends of the family. A couple of business associates of mine. Quite a mix from all walks of life. With regards to the blackmailing, can they be trusted, or should they be considered suspects? Angeline is struggling to trust anyone right now, but Madame Vandenbosch, as it is her house, thought it was best for us to have them all present. And they will all be staying in the house? Yes, it is a rather full house. All six guests will be staying on this floor. The family resides on the second floor. As does Felix. I will be sure to speak with them all. However, I will keep my identity and purpose for being here hidden, at least until I have made my initial introductions. I'm afraid that ship may have already sailed. Once the Comtesse gets wind of something, a detective coming to the house, for example, you can bet everyone will know. Do not help noticing an air of antipathy when mentioning the Major. You are very observant, detective. You would be wise to keep that perceptive nature while you're here. I'm sure you are correct, but I'd like to return to your feelings towards the Major. He has been a good friend to Madame Vandenbosch over the years, but that does not make him a good man, or suitable to involve himself in family affairs. Uh, he might be trying to get in between the marriage. Monsieur Gideon has not said anything negative against the Major, but it sounds as though he is questionable of the Major's intentions in the house. Merci, Monsieur. I shall leave you to prepare for tonight's celebrations. Alrighty. Let's see. We haven't had any connections, but we can kind of clear them out. Guests residing on first floor. What is on? Okay, so we can't go upstairs, but we can go downstairs. Bon Mademoiselle Angeline is here. The sooner I learn ab more about the blackmail, the quicker she can return to celebrating her happy news. I am also eager to hear about Mademoiselle Elizabeth and what became of young Florette. Find out what happened to Elizabeth and all of them. The Van Den Bosch family have, had, have held a place in my mind since our first meeting. I am most interested to see what has changed since then. Well, there's a lot here. And there is something that is connected.
So it's probably something with this and maybe the receipt. This will not get me any closer. Nope. How about the tag on the vase and the receipt? I must act on thought and fact. If that's the case, then the only thing left is the tag on the vase and the receipt. Another success. I never doubted myself. It appears the family's financial situation is much the same as the last time I saw them. Can I confirm this? Talk to Gideon again. Well, before we talk to Elizabeth, let's talk to Gideon and get it out of the way. Please, ask away, detective. I'm aware finances can be a sensitive subject, but may I ask of the house's situation? As far as I'm aware, everything is in order. From what I understand, the late Viscount had made some questionable investments. But that is all in the past. Interesting. And regarding the payment of the blackmail? Angeline does not have to worry about money anymore. I was born into some wealth, and I have earned my own fortune. Merci, monsieur. I shall leave you to prepare for tonight's celebrations. Okay. We can connect something else as well. Gideon believes finances are in order. But we know it's either going to be this one or this one. Things are beginning to become clearer. It looks like the family have finally got back on track with their money problems. Great to hear. I don't know about that. Get rid of that. Anything else here? Nope. Let us go down, and we will talk to Zack first. Detective, it looks as though I might be out here all weekend. What can I do for you? Would it not be easier to find the staff yourself instead of waiting for the return? I'm a guest. I shouldn't have to go around chasing them. Perhaps the party preparation is more of a priority. It's not my fault they aren't ready. Why don't I wait here while you check in the butler's pantry in the East Corridor? I think I saw a maid go in there earlier. I shall take up no more of your time. A bientôt. Alright, so we have a new little mission to do. Inspect the butler's pantry. Where is the pantry at though? Doesn't really tell me, so we gotta kinda like explore for it. But no reason not to talk to uh, Angeline, who was the one that stole or hid her bracelet in the old, uh, the last episode. Mademoiselle Angeline, it is a pleasure to see you again. Detective, how wonderful you are here. Your travel was not too arduous, I hope. Watching from my carriage window, I saw the beautiful countryside and rolling hills. It was anything but taxing. I'm truly thankful you could make it here at such late notice. No thanks are required, mademoiselle. When one is requested personally, there is nothing more important. It seems the staff have been almost run off their feet today. Is it always like this? Gideon and I only wanted a small dinner to celebrate our engagement. But Maman was adamant on throwing this party. It may have been her idea, but it's the staff that have made it happen. So it looks like her mother hasn't learned her lesson. She still has a very negative view on uh, servants and whatnot. Their efforts do not go unnoticed, from me at least. They have been with us for so long. I do my best to make sure they are happy and content. Madame Mozil has made a remarkable transformation from selfish, spoiled brat to the gracious young woman I see before me. Although I must solve this case alone, Madame Mosille invites insight may be a great assistance throughout my investigation. Oh, so let's first figure out what happened to the maid servant that they uh, said stole her bracelet. Oh, detective. 
I'm afraid I just don't know. Also, she never went to go find her. She was quite adamant at the police station that she would not be returning to the house, but I assumed she would at least collect her belongings. Maman demanded that Elizabeth pack up everything she had and dispose of it. As if the poor girl had not already lost enough. But I couldn't let that happen. Elizabeth and I took her belongings, what little there was of them, to a friend of hers in the town that Elizabeth knew of. But not even she had heard from her. That's strange. Let's keep on talking about the florette. I wanted to contact her, but I had no address or telephone number. Surely Madame must have had some information when she employed her. You saw how Mama was. As soon as Florette was out of sight of the house, it was as though she had never been there at all. Elizabeth was most upset at the news Florette would not be returning. And your Mama's choice to ignore her accountability for the girl stopped you searching. Please, detective, you cannot make me feel any worse than I already do. If I could go back and, and live that day again, you must believe me. I would never have done it. Angeline has finally accepted responsibility and is remorseful for her actions that day and the consequences that followed. I am pleased to see a maturity in her, but that does, but that does not help young Fl Florette, wherever she may be. And we'll do the blackmail one last. Yes, Maman has quite a collection, although they are not all to my test. Most, in fact. The painting of the saints, in particular, it is quite exquisite. Is it connected to the house in some way? The one in the hall? If you look above your bedroom door, you will see one of their names. I believe they were originally carved to watch over the occupant. Interesting. And let's do the blackmail letter. Only Maman, Elizabeth, my beloved Gideon, and you, of course. And what is your fiancé's opinion of the letters? He thinks me foolish for paying the first one if there is no secret to reveal, but... But you believe there may be a secret lurking, one that Maman is herself keeping hidden. She tells me nothing. Even though I'm a grown woman on the verge of marriage, she still treats me like the child I once was. Perhaps it is out of love that she protects you. It is in every mother's nature to protect their young from hurt. The relationship between Madame and Mademoiselle is obvious far from perfect. She should treasure the time she has with Mademoiselle Angeline before she is wed and has flown the nest. Do you have any suspicions as to who may have sent the letters? Not a single person. I don't know anyone that would stoop so low. The guests that will be joining us tonight, they are ones you can trust? I hope so, detective. Before the letters arrived, I would not have thought twice about it. They are all close friends of yours, I assume. Friends and colleagues. Gideon has spoken positively about them. It would be a rather underhanded tactic to do such a thing to someone you are doing business with. Mademoiselle seems naive to the nature of business. It can be ruthless and unapologetic. Perhaps I should not overlook them as suspects as quickly as Mademoiselle has. Merci, Mademoiselle. I shall find you if there is anything further I need. Alrighty. And luckily there's no connections that we got to be worried about, but I'm going to clear some of these up. But yeah, so this woman right here, Florette, might be involved she's been missing for so long. Okay, we finished that one. And there is a connection here though. And the connection is probably between the plaque and the group of saints. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Seven prestigious saints. I should find these above seven doors in the house. I wonder if this matches the number of expected guests. Maybe this one and guests residing in first floor? Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. All the first floor rooms are accounted for. Perhaps the missing door is hidden elsewhere. 
Oh, there's... How many rooms are on the first floor? One door is missing. There is a connection here. I'm kind of surprised because we haven't found the, the one door that's missing. Come, my little gray cells. We... Oh, probably a few secrets. What a revelation! Yeah, there's a hidden door somewhere. I fear Mademoiselle's secrets may not be the only one this house is hiding. Alrighty. So, we gotta look for a room somewhere. I'm assuming it's over here in this hallway. Butler's Pantry. Let me check if this door is open or still locked. Still locked. Okay. Look at the lights, though. They got these nice, like, bright orbs. See what we can find. Huh. The, cook, the cook was obviously used them for quite some time, judging by their condition. Alrighty. There does not seem to be anything of interest in here. And let us talk to the maid. Oh, it's Elizabeth. Ah, Mademoiselle Elizabeth. What a pleasure to see you again. Detective Poirot, I'm so glad you could make it. Unfortunately, it is not purely for pleasure that I am here. Mademoiselle Angeline requires my attention professionally. Yes, Angeline has told me. I'm glad she called upon you, Detective. I've been rather worried about her. I will do everything I can to find the blackmailer and bring them to justice. I have every faith in you. I hope I am not interrupting you. We are all very busy, as I'm sure you can imagine. After I'm done, I can come to your room and help you with any further questions. I'd rather embarrassed to say I'm having trouble locating my room. Let's, before we get to that, let's just say I saw the welcome bo book as I arrived. Ah, yes. Guests are requested to sign the book when arriving. I believe it gives details to the guests' room locations. It stated the male guests are to be staying in the East Wing. Yes, Madame does not believe in male and female guests residing beside one another. And then let's do it the embarrassed, uh, having trouble locating my room. No one escorted you! I'm so sorry. Everyone is just so frantic at the moment. Madame has requested all staff prepare for this evening. And you have been tasked with jobs in the pantry. Surely your talents could be used elsewhere. I do as Madame asks. Well, as Archie asks. Monsieur Sterling. Yes, I met him when I arrived. A charming gentleman. He did give me some rather vague instructions to find my room, though. I can only apologize on his behalf. He would be mortified. I'm afraid I cannot be of much more help, but I believe you are located next to Mr. De Silva. By all means, the house is yours to explore. All right, so if we can find Mr. De Silva, we'll be able to find our room. I suppose I should not take Monsieur Sterling's lack of direction personally, considering the amount of work the staff have been tasked with. At least now I have permission to further roam the house. I'm glad to see Angeline has not allowed the blackmail to dampen her spirits today. Yes, I'm afraid it may be all for show, though. She has not been herself, and it is not only I that have noticed. Madame Vandenbosch? Surely it must have had some effect on her. Madame has carried on as though nothing has happened. She has never been one to show emotion, and she doesn't seem to notice how it has affected Angeline. The staff, on the other hand... Angeline means no harm, but there have been some instances recently where she has acted rather sharply with them. Interesting. Maybe she hasn't matured as much as we thought. I hope not too sharply. A house of two Madame Vandenbosch's would surely be too much for anyone. I have been eagerly waiting to hear more of Belgium's greatest love story. Let's see if they actually got together. It doesn't look like it. Oh, yes. Um, well, I'm afraid it is far from a happy ending. Luke is sadly no longer with us. 
Oh, mademoiselle, I, I was not aware. It's fine, detective, honestly. I'm sorry, but I really must finish this. Bien sûr, mademoiselle. For a man that has a mind so brilliant and astute, I've made an easy job of embarrassing myself. Let this be a reminder to use one gray cells before speaking. Uh, merci, mademoiselle. Pleasure is mine, detective. Alrighty. So let me clear out all these exclamation points. We can talk to Angeline. That's it there. Welcome book is correct. Talk to Zachariah. So we pretty much need to talk to everyone. And that should do it. Let's inspect this room though. There might be something we're missing. Make sure there's nothing here for them being so busy. They had time to play cards though. Very weird. We've already checked the cupboard. We've already talked to her. Looks like there's really nothing else here that we need to investigate. But it's still saying it says inspect the butler's pantry. Uh -huh. Yeah, we've already saw that. We've already looked at that as well. We're missing something though, I, I know. But it looks like I'm not really for sure what it might be. So there's no reason for us to stay here any longer. We'll just come back here later. Before you leave, detective, I have something for you beside the furnace here from Angeline. She wanted me to give it to you on your arrival. Merci, mademoiselle. That must be the thing we needed. Hmm. The second letter acknowledges a payment from a previous blackmail letter. You were wise to make me seriously, to take me seriously. You have bought my silence for a moment at least. Your family's privacy obviously means a great deal to you if you are willing to pay to keep your secrets hidden and continue to pay you will. Would your Mammon be as willing to part with her wealth? You will bring a second parcel with another 5,000 francs or francs to the cobblers, this time addressed to a Monsieur Fontaine by clothes on Friday. You have done your family's service by keeping this arrangement to yourself. I'm sure I do not have to tell you what will happen if the police are involved, and I hope it will not come to that. I am now able to read the letters that were sent to Angeline. I am sure there is a great deal to learn from them and hopefully some clues to the author. An interesting looking piece of stationery appears rather delicate. Oh, was it handwritten with a quill pen? Things are beginning to become clearer. But with someone in the house. I can't ignore the coincidence that the same style of pen that wrote the letter is present in the house. Talk to Elizabeth. Let me clear all these out. So it wants us to talk to her some more? Of course, Detective. What is it? I noticed a rather extravagant looking pen in the hall. I would not say it in front of the Major, but it is rather hideous. It was a gift from him to Madame from his time overseas. I don't think it even has the capability of writing. A pen that does not write is like a fish that cannot swim. As Angeline describes it, a useless ornament. It's the thought that counts, I suppose. Uh, merci, mademoiselle. Pleasure is mine, detective. 
All right, so we know that they might not be connected. All right, so what we need to do is talk to Angeline and talk to Zachariah again. A lot of going back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure out what's going on. But we've already passed the 30 minute mark, so I think we're going to stop here today. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the links below. And in the next one, we'll talk to Angeline and Zachariah and see what further information we can find.